Hello everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at Disenchanted. This is the direct-to-Disney Plus sequel to Enchanted, directed by Adam Shankman and starring Amy Adams, Patrick Dempsey, and Maya Rudolph. After finding her happily ever after, and having a new baby, Giselle and Robert have outgrown their New York City apartment and are off to the burbs. Giselle's now teenage stepdaughter Morgan has not responded well to the move and having to leave behind New York City and her friends. And this hasn't sat well with Giselle, who would very much like to get along with her stepdaughter and overall make their life in the burbs a bit better. Fortunately, Edward and Nancy, played once again by James Marston and Adina Menzel, have given them a wand of wishing as a housewarming gift and Giselle uses it to wish for a fairy tale life. But as is always the case in these types of stories, you got to be careful what you wish for. Disenchanted brings back most of the original cast, and Alan Menken is back to write the score, so you would think they'd be able to capture some of the magic of the original. Well... not really. I was willing to give this a chance, because it's not the first inexplicable sequel to hit Disney+. Plus. Hocus Pocus 2 happened earlier this year, and I like that. But sadly, lightning did not strike twice. It didn't help much that they clearly had a very low budget to work with, although so did Hocus Pocus 2 and they made that work. Disenchanted, not so much. But the budget isn't the main problem. The biggest problem is the story is just all over the place. When they first get to the Burbs, they meet this overwhelming busybody named Malvina, played by Maya Rudolph. And boy, you should not name your child Malvina. That's just asking for trouble. Anyway, she's running all of the committees and fundraisers and whatnot, the uncrowned queen of the burbs, basically. Morgan is kind of the outcast at her new high school, and she meets this guy who might be into her, but they're not really in the same social circles, and he might already have a girlfriend, it's not really clear. And Robert now has to deal with actually commuting to work and taking public transportation. Oh no, the horror. But by the time the second act kicks in after Giselle makes her wish, Pretty much all of that goes out the window, except for the Queen Malvina thing, kind of. The town basically turns into the village from Beauty and the Beast, complete with singing appliances. And it's a little weird that they still have modern appliances, even though everything else looks like it's centuries old. What year is it? And from that point on, it's just a completely different movie. If I didn't know any better, I would swear the two credited story writers wrote completely different stories for this movie, and the sole credited screenwriter had the unfortunate task of trying to stitch them together into a coherent plot. And bless her heart, she tried. There is a really weird moment early on where they're driving into the burbs, moving into their new town, and Robert goes, hey, look at that, and everyone looks up, and they're looking at a clock tower. That's it. There's nothing remarkable about it. It's just a clock. Like, y'all never seen a clock before? And literally the only reason they point out that clock is because it becomes a plot point later on. Or really, time becomes a plot point. The clock doesn't matter. You could have had any clock whatsoever. It's a shame because there are some interesting ideas in this story. When Giselle wishes for a fairy tale life, she inadvertently causes herself to start turning evil because she's the stepmother in this story and, you know, because Cinderella, wicked stepmother. She even gets kind of a Gollum Smeagol moment, which was actually kind of funny. We should be nice to our stepdaughter. No, we shouldn't, precious. She's a brat. And Pip the chipmunk transforms into a cat because an evil stepmother has to have a cat, and he gets a few funny lines as well. But unfortunately, Giselle turning evil leads to her and Malvina fighting to see who becomes the wicked queen of the village. And speaking as a wrestling fan, this is a heel versus heel matchup, and there's a reason why those don't work. And at this point in the story, Morgan suddenly becomes the hero. Complete about face from the first act. How'd that happen? And this really isn't the actress's fault. She did an okay job. It's just a little weird to see someone new playing the role of Morgan when the original actress has a cameo in the movie. What exactly happened there? Maybe they just wanted someone who was a stronger singer? I don't know. One thing that really stands out to me, especially after watching Hocus Pocus 2, the people behind Hocus Pocus 2 really got what made the original work. I cannot say the same for Disenchanted. If you remember the first movie, and if you haven't seen it, you should, it's pretty good. There is a moment where Giselle starts singing and basically makes the entire city of New York burst into a song and dance number just by the power of singing, because she's a Disney princess and that's what they do. But in this movie, when she starts singing, people just look at her like she's weird. 
they really did not get it. And it doesn't help that the music is sadly not all that memorable this time around. Although I will say they did correct an oversight from the first movie, and Adina Menzel actually gets to sing this time. I don't know how you cast Adina Menzel in a musical and you don't have her sing. Wicked had already been on Broadway by that point, they had no excuse. Overall, there were some good moments here and there, and the cast definitely put forth the effort, but the script did not give them a whole lot to work with, and the magic just was not there. I can't really recommend checking this one out, honestly. If you have Disney+, Plus, just watch the original Enchanted. It's much better. And that's all I have to say about Disenchanted. Till next time, take care.